Hello and welcome. The day has finally come. My Lisa Eldridge order arrived. I ordered all 10 new shades of lipstick that she released for her summer 2022 collection, seven new shades of luxuriously loosened, and three new shades of insanely saturated. So I'm going to be lip swatching all of these. I'll also arm swatch all of them and talk a little bit about each of the colors and my thoughts on them. So if you'd like to see that, just keep on watching. Let's get started with Le Mepris. This is actually the shade that I was most excited for. So I'm really looking forward to trying this. Here's what it looks like in the bullet. And here it is on the lips. So there's a little bit of a lighter layer and let's see if it will build up a little bit. Just love the way these glide onto the lips, these luxuriously loosened shades. It's such a beautiful feeling on the lips and just such a pleasure to apply. So here's Le Mepri built up. Le Mepri is a sublimely nuanced but wearable soft beige hue that's straight out of a Jean-Luc Godard masterpiece. Think Brigitte Bardot, tousled bouffant hair, and kissable lips. I'm so happy with this shade because, as Lisa said in her video introducing these new shades, these types of pale beigey colors can often wash people out, and I'm included among those people. But she said that this is a little bit different because it has just that much more color that it doesn't wash you out, and you still get that beautiful pale kind of pouty lip effect but you also have enough color and pigment in there that it still brings life to the face. I think this is a stunning shade. I can't wait to wear this more. I'm really happy with this one. Next up, we have Rosy Shell. I have to say in the bullet, this looks darker and warmer than I was expecting it to look based on the pictures online and Lisa's video. So let's see how this looks on the lips. So there's one thin layer of rosy shell, and let's build it up. And here's rosy shell built up. About rosy shell, Lisa says, the delicate coastal pink hue of rose cup seashells are brought to lucent life in this deliciously pretty shade. A light pink with a mix of cool and warm undertones. Rosy shell is a picnic on the beach in July without the sand in your sandwiches. So it does translate cooler on my lips than it looked in the bullet. So I definitely say this is more of a cool tone, sort of blue based type pink, but it definitely has some warmth in there to kind of balance it out and tone it a little bit. So although this is not the type of shade that I would tend to go for regularly, I prefer usually more warms and more nude type shades. I still feel actually quite comfortable wearing this shade. So I think it's a really beautifully done color. Next up, we have Je Ne Sais Quoi. Here's what it looks like in the bullet. And let's see it on the lips. So there's just one thin layer of Je Ne Sais Quoi. It actually has quite a lot of pigment, but let's try building it up. Here's Je Ne Sais Quoi built up to full pigmentation. Hard to pin down, Je Ne Sais Quoi is a warm, creamy coral. Its summery magic lies in the duality of its vibrancy and subtlety. Somehow, this lively shade manages to brighten the face without being an overtly bright shade. And I'd agree with that description. This is definitely brighter than I would normally go for on an everyday basis but it does have that balance so that it's not kind of overwhelmingly or shockingly bright. It's a really beautiful, warm, bright coral. And you can see these colors, although they're a more sheer formula, they can definitely be built up to a pretty high level of coverage and pigment, and they do stain the lips a bit. My lips, of course, I'm rubbing them, so there's, that's gonna bring a bit of blood and color to my lips anyway, but there's also a little bit of pigment being left behind, which means that these luxuriously loosened lipsticks wear really beautifully and wear down really beautifully and evenly and still leave a little bit of color even after most of the lipstick has worn off. So next up we have Meet Me in Berlin, which was another shade that I was quite looking forward to trying. Here's what it looks like in the bullet and let's see it on the lips. So there's a very thin one layer application of Meet Me in Berlin. 
and let's build it up. Here's Meet Me in Berlin built up. I love this shade to me. This is a very wearable brown shade. This is the type of shade I would go for on an everyday basis. I loved it in that very thin layer. It's just a little bit less intense and allows a little bit more of your natural lip color to show through that way. But I love it built up too. I think this is a fabulous color and will definitely be one of my favorites. A deliciously rich tan shade, which delivers to various intensities as a brown nude across all skin tones. Inspired by a shoot Lisa worked on in East Berlin in the early 2000s, there's a hint of the avant-garde and counterculture feel to this one. Next up, we have Palazzo, another one I was quite looking forward to. Here it is in the tube. And let's see how it looks on the lips. So here's one thin layer of Palazzo, and let's build it up. So here's Palazzo in its full pigmentation. It's beautiful. It's a little more cherry, almost a little bit more blue in it than I was expecting, but I still love this shade. It definitely still has that balance of warm and cool that I think is really flattering in a red shade. If there's such thing as an everyday red, this is definitely it. Take a Roman holiday with this rich, deep, neutral red inspired by the interiors of the richly decorous palaces of Italy. As regal as a Renaissance portrait, yet as exhilarating as a ride through Rome on a Vespa. So that's Palazzo. Next up, we have Wonder Wheel. Here's Wonder Wheel in the bullet, and let's see it on the lips. So there's one layer of Wonder Wheel, and let's build it up. And here's Wonder Wheel built up to full pigmentation. Roll up, roll up for this deliciously juicy popsicle pink shade, a mouthwateringly vibrant reddish pink that alights lips with all the heady nostalgic fun of the Ferris wheel. This is a stunning color for summertime. Again, this is not one that I would go to on an everyday basis, and it is a little bit more of a pink. I can definitely see a lot of the pink coming through. It reminds me a little bit of Skyscraper Rose, so I'll have to compare those in my comparisons video because it's definitely a reddish pink, but I can see a little bit of a blue undertone to it as well in conjunction with the warmth of the red. And the last of the luxuriously lucent shades today is Night Thoughts. Here it is in the bullet. Let's see it on the lips. So there's one layer of Night Thoughts. And let's build it up. Here's Night Thoughts built up to full pigmentation. A deep creme de cassis saturnine shade with a heart of darkness. A sensual black cherry hue that suits all skin tones. One swipe will give you the mauve veneer of just bitten lips. Whilst built up, it gives a gorgeous depth, as profound and deep as the conversations with friends that carry through the night. What a beautifully rich shade. I think I'll probably be more inclined to wear this in the winter time. It's just that kind of deep wintry shade and I especially love it in a sheer layer but it's stunning built up too. So now let's move into the three new shades of insanely saturated lip color. First up we have Sunday Matinee. Here it is in the bullet. Let's see it on the lips. There's one very thin layer of Sunday Matinee and let's build it up. So here's Sunday Matinee built up. I love this color. This is my kind of a pink. I love that it's definitely a pink. It's obviously a pink, but it's not too bright. It's not too cool. It's not too warm. It's a beautifully balanced tone. I think it definitely pulls a little bit more toward the warm side, at least on me. So for me, that makes it a perfect pink and it does have a little bit of a muted quality that just makes it all that much more wearable. A soft, pouty, medium pink with a hint of warmth. Never washed out or too try hard. It's as insouciant and laid back as a Sunday spent watching your favorite classic film. So that's Sunday matinee, and let's move on to Strawberry Shock. Here's Strawberry Shock in the bullet. Let's get it on the lips. There's one thin layer of Strawberry Shock. 
It feels very weightless. It's almost like you have nothing on your lips when you apply it in this very thin layer. But let's build this up. And here's Strawberry Shock built up to full pigmentation. This color makes me so happy. It's so beautiful and vibrant, but again, has that wearability to it that you wouldn't expect from such a bright shade. This is such a special shade and obviously perfect for summer. A sun-filtered red that hides a dash of shocking punk pink extremity at its heart. A bright, shouty, strawberry daiquiri hue that instantly energizes. A true Goldilocks of bright reds, it's neither too cool nor too warm. It's one of those colors just like the other insanely saturated shades that she brought out before, Rainbow Spill and Skyscraper Rose, that you just can't stop looking at. You look at it, you look away, and then you look back and you see even more going on in the tone. So striking and nuanced and bold, and that heavy saturation is just mesmerizing. So that's Strawberry Shock, and let's move into our last shade. In between these darker and brighter shades, I've just been going in with my Westman Atelier Vital Skin Foundation in Atelier Zero and the Real Technique setting brush. I'm just taking a little bit and kind of dusting it over to clean things up and just get a little bit of a fresher starting place for each color. So let's move into our final color for today. This is New Wave. And let's get it on the lips. Here's one layer of New Wave. And let's build it up. Here's New Wave built up. Another incredibly nuanced shade that just has so much going on with it. For me, a purple lip can be a little bit difficult to wear. It definitely needs to have some hint of a red undertone to it for me to be able to wear it at all, and this definitely has it. It's very obviously a purple. I wouldn't look at this and think it's like a pink or a red. Um, even magenta brings to mind more kind of pinky reddy tones. This is a very purple shade to me, but has enough of that red warmth underneath it that I'm able to wear it. New Wave is an unashamedly bold magenta, modern yet classic, subversive yet soft. With its cool blue undertones, this statement cyclamen shade is shot through with edgy glamour and electronica chic. So she mentions the blue tones in it, which really brings it into that purple zone. But as I say, it has enough warmth and balance going on. So that's New Wave. And just so you can see how strong that color is, I've completely wiped New Wave off. It still kind of looks like I'm wearing the lipstick. I had to put Strawberry Shock back on. I'm very enamored of this shade, but I wanted to go through and swatch all of these shades on my arm, so let's do that now. So here are all 10 of the new shades swatched. Le Mépris, Rosy Shell, Je Ne Sais Quoi, Meet Me in Berlin, Palazzo, Wonder Wheel, and Night Thoughts. Those are the luxuriously lucent shades. And then the last three here, Sunday Matinee, Strawberry Shock, and New Wave. So it's no surprise to me, nor to anyone else probably, that I'm very happy with this collection. I love these shades. I can't wait to play around with them more. What you saw here was my true first impressions. This was my first time opening each of the bullets and trying them on my lips. But of course, I'm already familiar with these formulas and I know I love them. Right off the bat, the ones I'm most excited for, I would say Strawberry Shock, um, Sunday Matinee, because it's just that perfect mid-tone pink. Le Mépris, I'm very excited about and really looking forward to wearing that one more and trying it with different looks. And I would say probably Meet Me in Berlin is my other favorite at this point. But they're all beautiful shades and great formulations and it's really just a matter of what you're looking for and what suits you best. I'm not going to be doing any comparisons in this video. I think I'm going to have to do a whole separate video for that because I have a lot of comparisons in mind that I want to take a look at, and I just want to have the time to kind of think about those a little bit more before I do that video and just have the time in the video to, to go through them in a little bit of detail. So I'm going to be comparing these shades to other Lisa Eldridge shades that I have. I have every single one of Lisa Eldridge's lipsticks that she's ever released. 
I have all of her glosses as well. And there are a few lipstick shades from other ranges that I'd like to bring in and do comparisons with as well. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of time to prepare for that. But I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful for you to see all these shades on my lips. Stay tuned for the more in-depth comparisons video. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below. I always love to see those. And if you'd like to see more from me and you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I would love for you to do so. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.